At the same time, Senegalese are heading to the polls today to elect a new president. More than six million people are registered to vote. President Macky Sall is the front runner, and his opposition includes former Prime Minister Idrissa Sek and politician Madike Niang. To discuss this, we're joined by Africa analyst Jean Boissa. A very good morning to you, Jean. Thank you for coming in. Do you think President Sall will defeat the opposition, given that he's had so much praise since 2012 for his success in building the Senegalese economy, which was in quite a fair bit of trouble when he took over? Well, uh, thank you very much, Tembekile, for receiving us on your platform, ENCA. Uh, first of all, I would like to say also pay my tribute to Mama Dorothy, Hambakatle Mama. Uh, with regard to the elections in uh, Senegalese, I would like to mention the fact that it is important that uh, when we speak about elections in Africa, we also do not take it in isolation because they, it's part of a history. I can concur to what you are saying that uh, Macky Sall will uh, win the elections uh, in Senegal, partly because of the tradition that we have uh, in Senegal since uh, um, they got their independence in 1958 uh, with uh, president, the then president, uh, Seda Senghor. After Senghor, we had... Uh, um, Abdou Diouf, Abdou Diouf, Wade, and Macky Sall. So it's a stable uh, democracy, and that stable democracy has been going on from development to development. We haven't had the instability we have had uh, in other African countries. Therefore, when you have peace and stability, it is important that you build your country, and that is exactly what Macky Sall has done in the first term that he has served. You talk about peace and stability, Jean Brasser, but some of the observers have criticized Macky Sall, saying that in the run-up to this election, from as early as last year, he headed a clampdown on the opposition. Various opposition leaders have been arrested on what they say are trumped-up charges against them of corruption. We have one opposition leader who's in exile in Qatar. How, then, do you put that picture together? Do you balance that saying there's peace and stability, yet we're sitting here with an election where some are saying Macky Sall resorted to rather nefarious ways to secure victory? Well, uh, you know, the story of Africa, it's always a tragic story. We always spent the negative without looking at the positive. Indeed, when you are in a political struggle and battle, there are feathers that you are going to lose. And those feathers, they're saying that there was also the son of uh, former president, uh, Abdoulaye Wade, who is also incarcerated for uh, maladministration and fraud. So how do we tackle this issue of uh, somebody who has been corrupt? And uh, Macky Sall saying, the people that are corrupt, I do not want them to, to run for elections. Indeed, we won't have uh, perfect elections. In Africa, neither do we have perfect elections in our former colon colonizers' countries. Are you saying that President Saul has acted within the law and that, in fact, the opposition leaders who found themselves in legal trouble are indeed guilty of corruption and that sort of thing? Well, let me respond to this because uh, it is important that in African countries we understand what uh, the then General de Gaulle, who's uh, the people that trained the Macky Sall, the Senghor, Abdou Diouf, said it is difficult to run a country when you have 2, 000, uh, 267 cheese, type of cheese. So it's difficult today because, it, again, in Latin we say the gustibus et coloribum, non disputandum as taste and color can be disputed. And the and translation is? Taste and colors can be disputed. They might say that it has been a, gr a firm grip on the opposition, but at the same time, let's look at the positive, and I've said this a countless number of times on the media channel. Let's focus on the positive that Macky Sall has done in Senegal. And these positive are to modernize his country, the infrastructure in the country, health, education, 
and uh, employment. Still, there are some challenges, like the youth that do not want to vote because they don't have uh, uh, an elect a voter card. These are uh, challenges. There are those youth that are crossing the Mediterranean Sea to go and seek greener pasture. But when somebody, an African leader, is developing a country and is trying to make every possible way so that the country can be a vital and vibrant uh, African country okay. where everybody can live, uh, I think we need to applaud and acknowledge that, first of all. He is building, as we say now, the Silicon Valley of Western Africa. Okay, very quickly, I want to come in there because in all of this building that you talk about, the economic boom is no doubt President Saul's biggest achievement in the last few years. But there's also been quite a few questions raised about the role of French companies in particular, because French is Senegal's former colonial ruler. Is, how influential are the French in the current political discourse of Senegal? Well... I would say that the French are influential in all their former colonies. But let's speak specifically about Senegal, please, very quickly. Uh, they are very influential for the simple fact that you must understand that most of the Senegalese have studied in France, notably in the University of Sorbonne, and therefore they have that uh, uh, mentality that drives them to implement the policy that are driven and implemented by France. So this is quite critical to understand, but if you are doing it for the benefit of your people, then so be it. If it is against your people, then we can condemn that. For now, I do believe that is alleviating the poverty in Senegal, and it is for us African to understand that it is hopefully the right model for democracy in Africa, that is uh, Senegal, Shandosa. sound democracy. Jean Barsa, thank you for your time this it's Sunday. It's a pleasure.